Coming up next on this episode of the Unlock You podcast. Like, I, I really believe relationship is a currency yeah. of wellness, mm -hmm. of what that looks like. You really want to be well, have really good relationships. Now, you don't, you can't, can't be friends with completely every single person you meet, and you can't go deep with a, a ton of people, but there should be at least a handful of people that you're doing life with, as we like to say, that, that, that get to know you, that get to understand what your heart is, that understand the core values of who you are as a person. Hey friends, thanks so much for joining us. This is Unlock You with Dr. Shannon Crawford. I'm a clinical psychologist, leadership consultant, and a really big fan of you getting to fulfill your life purpose. I want you to get unstuck and unlock your potential relationally, emotionally, spiritually, and vocationally. Thanks for joining us and let's get started. Welcome to Unlock You with Dr. Shannon Crawford. And I went to an amazing conference called Leaders Advance in Redding, California. And I had this moment that I was just kind of standing by myself and my eyes landed on this gentleman. And I was like, I'm supposed to know him. And those are awkward moments when it's not like in a personal way, more just like kingdom way. And so went over, introduced myself and developed a new friend. So I want to introduce you to Greg Hendrix, and he is a development pastor at a church in San Diego, and he's helping develop influencers, celebrities, athletes, helping them go to their next level to position them and to help unlock their, uh, their greatness and the things that are in their heart to do. Um, and I think for many of us, we've just kind of gone through life and we have a glass ceiling over us and we get to a certain level and then it's like, there's a plateau. And so I thought it would be really cool to hear hear from a development pastor, how do we unlock some of those things and treasures and desires inside of us that we may have dreamt of, but we don't know how to action on it. So thank you for being with us, Greg. Hey, Shannon. Thanks for having me. Appreciate uh, you having me on the show. I'm looking forward to diving in on how we can unlock greatness in people's lives, especially coming out of the a year that we had uh, over yes. the last year and a half. The time to dream is now. And for yes, many of absolutely. us, me included, I was so like thrown off by 2020. I, it's a joke among my friends, how much hair I was actually losing. And I'm like, I'm not stressed. I'm not anxious. I'm totally fine. I'm like, <laughs> literally so much hair gone from stress. So uh, mm. now kind of getting back up, getting our footing. If you were meeting with somebody and you were wanting to help unlock them and develop them, what would be some of the first things you would start with? Uh, first thing I would ask is uh, how, how are you doing? Um, most people say, oh, I'm fine. Everything's good. I'll be like, okay, uh, tell me some of the things that uh, really uh, brought you back over the last year and a half. Uh, tell me some things that uh, maybe caused you to not dream about anymore. Yeah. Um, and then the, the, uh, the follow-up question to that is what are some of your dreams that have been in your heart that you maybe hadn't necessarily shared with someone just to kind of give me a little bit of a landscape on what is stirring in their heart, what their ambitions are, what their dreams are, what they would like to see. Oftentimes out of those questions, you start to get like a, a, a gauge or a measurable on where people are at. Sometimes you find out that people stop dreaming. Mm -hmm. uh, some, some people uh, allow the season to stifle their dreams or extinguish their dreaming. Yeah. Um, some people uh, allow the season to extinguish their passion in pursuing that dream or the development of what that looks like. Um, and, and, and it's very common, honestly, it's very common because what, what COVID really did, it, it caused a lot of things to come to the forefront, um, especially when everyone was isolated into their home. So I tend to ask questions that are geared specifically towards that person um, and, and allow them to be in a space to dream and visualize uh, greatness for their lives again. Um, and, and, and starting from there is always an amazing point, uh, to move forward. And which, again, what you find is that it makes them come alive, even just doing that in itself, yeah. because, you know, nowadays it's more survive. It's like, Oh, how do I get from A to B? How do I get there? How do I bring my family in tow? You know, how do I get my health back? So on and so forth. So those are always good starting points, uh, to, to bring in some, uh, gold, to bring what I say, to bring the gold out of somebody in the yeah. next season. Okay. So we're starting with a baseline. So for those who are listening, maybe writing down, what are my dreams? What has caused my heart to leap? 
Mm-hmm. And I think I've shared it in a past interview, but it doesn't necessarily mean that thing itself is what you're going to do, but it's something about that may cause your heart to leap. I remember mm-hmm. watching the Oscars as a kid and being like, oh, I want to be in media, right? I thought that meant I want to be an actress, but it's something about that really came alive. But mm-hmm. the first thing that as a psychologist, everybody is going to say is, but I've been disappointed. Who am I? Right. So there's going to be all the objections of why that's not possible possible and, right. or their mind might be totally blank and they don't even know how to dream their wings have been clipped and all hope is gone. And it's just like, it's safer and easier to just get through my day. So if yeah. somebody's experiencing a lot of block and they're not even able to hope and to dream, what would you do to kind of help that process? Well, I always tend to reframe that dreaming doesn't just necessarily mean like I'm going to achieve this over. You can still dream and be in your current position. Um, Some people, you know, they're working really hard. Um, Sometimes they're going from A to B. And that's that's totally a part of life. We, We tend to do that. But in the midst of working to put food on the table for your family or provide for yourself, you still have the ability to take time aside, maybe it's on a lunch break, or maybe it's time at home, or maybe when the kiddos are at school, or maybe, you know, wherever the situation may be, just to allow yourself to say, hey, even though my current situation is now, it does not dictate what it can be. I think so oftentimes like, well, if I get out of this scenario, then I can get over here and I can really start building. It's like, no, you can actually start building towards what God has intended for you as a person that you can step into your fullness right where you're at by just simply sitting there yeah. and you know allowing your heart to uh, open up um, towards the, the goal and the ambitions and the desires that um, has already been implanted in you. So I would say that is like a, an amazing thing to do. I, and I find that in the people that I talk with, you know, and I, I speak with different people general, you know, from, from political leaders to athletes, from people that are just everyday, um, uh, you know, have an everyday job like I have, you know, that, that, that we're not out there like that, but just people that are everyday people and, and, and giving them um, empowerment, you know, to be unlocked in this next season is like, Hey, you can be a, you can still dream and build towards that in your current season yeah. and not allow the circumstance of your season that you're in right now to extinguish that out. So starting there, giving them permission to mm-hmm. dream where they're at yeah. is like a, a great thing for people. Because again, oftentimes they feel like they got to be in another scenario in order to achieve, uh, you know, going in that direction. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. I think that it's part of our defense mechanisms to naturally put up a yeah, but, and whether it's my circumstance, my gender, my race, my socioeconomic, single, married, whatever the situation for you is, that yeah, but if you see that as a protection mechanism, then you can align with it and say thank you protection Mm -hmm. mechanism part of me. Thank you, Defender, for trying Mm -hmm. to protect me from disappointment. And I honor and validate that there have been disappointments in the past. So I'm not just whack-a-moling and pretending it's not there, which creates a a power struggle and a lot of self-sabotage later where we get afraid of failure, afraid of putting ourselves out there and getting disappointed. So if you can just at the onset, honor your defense mechanisms, thank that reaction, but not be controlled by it. Yeah, that's the key. So many of us, we just succumb to that thought and we have to take our thoughts captive just because you have a dream and your heart starts to go, oh my gosh, I feel something I'm resonating. And then you have a, yeah, but I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm this age. I'm this gender. I'm this race. I'm this marital status is so socioeconomic or education level or lack of education level, whatever that might be. When you recognize it in that moment, you take that thought captive and you go, thank you defender for trying to protect me. But mm-hmm. I choose hope. I yeah, choose and you, hope. Go yep, ahead. and you choose hope. And the, and the beautiful part about that hope um, is not only for you, it's for the people around you. And I think the, the next portion of once you get that down ingrained into your heart and it's okay, this is going to be a part of my journey. I think the next step that I like to, um, you know, lead people on is like, okay, what are you doing in the midst of your season uh, to serve other people around you? Mm-hmm. Like, how are they seeing that this desire is in your heart is not only going to transform you, but how is it going to impact the people in the environment around you that makes it better? Because let me tell you something, it's always good to receive something for yourself, but it's even better when you receive it 
for the people around you and they benefit of the overflow of your dreaming of the overflow of your ambitions, your goals, whether you're a psychologist and you're helping people come into a, a strengthening mental health or their hearts, or you're an athlete and you're, you're contributing to a team or you're a, a political leader trying to seek a solution that is going to be the empowerment and betterment of the people of your, your, your sphere of influence, whatever it may be, or maybe your soccer mom at yep. home or soccer dad. And, and, snacks. What, what, yeah. What, 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 what's going to happen when you're at home and your family is there? What's going to bring strength to your home? Yeah. What's going to bring strength to you as an employee when you're at your employer? Because I guarantee you, when you inherit those concepts, you go from being to an employee, from a, being an employee to an asset of a company. Like they like, I can't let this woman go. I can't let this guy go. We're going to have to figure out a way to make, help them stay with our team because you become a, a, a value of high value. And the cool part about that is you're already of high value from the very beginning, but you're just stepping into your fullness. So when you can understand uh, to learn how to serve other people in the midst of that, man, we talk about stepping into some acceleration for your life. It just goes to the next level because at that point you extract yourself out and you inject like, hey, my life is not only of my own, but I'm really here to benefit the people around me. That's so good. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of times one of the reasons we get so disappointed in life is because it is all about me. Mm -hmm. And so when it, the eye focus and it's where I'm going to be and my money and my position and my platform, what that's naturally doing is putting all the hope on this external circumstance, like a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And so it's so temporal and people are fickle positions are temporal. Nothing is really permanent about your calling and what you're going to do. There's many pivots in that journey. So mm -hmm. I think to your credit, you're inviting us to recognize not just about me getting to this place and what I'm going to do when I get there, but how do I enrich the lives around me every day, which by virtue is me practicing that skill set in the hidden place before then I'm platformed and I do it at a larger scale. It would be silly to try to do it in a big public way before you've done it in the, with your home, with your family, your community, your friends, your workplace. If you're not doing those skill sets now, it's pretty artificial to just think you're magically going to do it once you have this big title or income or position or platform. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I think COVID showed and proved that that's the case. I forced everyone to really focus in on the thing that was probably most important was, was your home because everybody was isolated. So mm -hmm. anything that you wanted to do had to start in your home first. Um, unfortunately, we saw um, that COVID, uh, it, the, the, the divorce rate spiked mm -hmm. because what a lot of people found out is that they necessarily didn't weren't in relationship with each other. They, they were on paper yeah, in relationship, but they weren't, they weren't in relationship with each other internally or in their heart. And I think what COVID really did is forced us to really reevaluate how to do life together, how to be in relationship with one another. I know uh, one of the uh, components of what we're talking about here that I discovered just in that time and what I do with people um, when I when I say I'm bringing the gold out of them is I, I ask them about their relationships. Like, how, what are your relationships with people? What are the level of relationships? How do you feel if I were to ask these people that you would mention what your relationship is with them? Would they say it's strictly business? Would they say it's personal? Would they say they allow me to speak into their lives? Would they say like he can... I could ask this person, he or she hard questions and then I get offended. Like, I, I really believe relationship is a currency yeah. of wellness mm -hmm. of what that looks like. You really want to be well, have really good relationships. Now, you don't you can't can't be friends with completely every single person you meet and you can't go deep with a, a ton of people. But there should be at least a handful of people that you're doing life with, as we like to say, that 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 get to know you, that get to understand what your heart is, that understand the core values of who you are as a person, the core values of who you are as a woman, the core values of who you are as a man, the core values of who you are as a mom or a dad and what you're instilling into your children. And it all stems out of relationship and being in relationship with people. And again, I believe COVID heightened the fact and, and, and enlightened the fact that a lot of people weren't in relationship with people. So you saw, you know, a lot of suicide spike, you saw divorce spike, you saw all these negative things spike because 
the fact of the matter is it was uncovered that we were not doing relationship very well. Right. Um, you know, but it was cool because technology was birthed out of that, you know, the stuff that were on the zoom and, and, and social media. And these are all just tools for us to be in better relationship, healthy relationship, authentic relationship, not no phony, not no plastic artificial, but like a deep relationship with people that you can trust people that can challenge you, people that can encourage you, people that can call the gold out in your life when they see that you're going a, a wrong way. So I feel like relationship is probably the third component and what it means to be unlocked and be healthy in this next season. Yeah. And for anybody who's hearing that and saying, well, that's nice, but I don't have relationships. Um, that would be a great opportunity to start looking for how you can be a friend normally when I look around my life and I'm discontent, then that's an invitation for me to say, how can I sew into that? How can I be strategic and lean into that space for others? And normally the right people will reciprocate and it'll forge a really great friendship. Like even with Greg, I wouldn't have met him that nobody introduced us. And there were hundreds of people at the conference. There wasn't like a mixer where you're intentionally meeting people, but in my knower, I just knew Jesus was connecting us somehow. Now. I don't know the details. I don't know why. And so I had to go up and actually introduce myself to a group of men standing there, like so awkward, but it, it birthed a really fun new friendship and who knows what's going to come from that. So I also don't want people to hear that and disqualify themselves saying, I don't have relationships. Well, then how can you posture yourself in places where you can cultivate that, be in community, go to dance groups, go to meetups or whatever, like hiking things that you might be interested in and start developing that lean in and recognize not everybody's going to be your friend. And there's some good people you need to say goodbye to obviously, but yep. there's some gems in there. There's some gold friendships. And so we want to encourage you to get off of the social media and get back into real life with real intimacy in your relationships. Absolutely. And being, be in contact with people that maybe don't even look like you, Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. it, and they have, they may have the same baseline interests. I'll give you an example. So let's say you meet somebody you know, find the commonality in the relationship. So let's say you have two kids and you ask, do you have any children? Yeah, I have two kids. I have two kids too, man. I can't stand it when my child does. It drives me crazy, but I love her, but she just, it drives me crazy. Oh, I love him, but it drives me crazy. These are just common starting points yeah. to maybe build relationship. And, and again, as you start journeying and tracking and maybe God says, oh, you know what? You're not maybe supposed to be this deep with this person, but they're just a contact. You know, they, they're a friend of yours or they're, they're an acquaintance. But then there may be the flip side of that where you do meet someone and you're like, man, I found someone that I actually can be friends with. I can yeah. actually and they may not even look like you. And here's the cool part about that. They may not look like you. They may not have the same background as you. But the best part about that is that you're breaking down any barriers or any uh, stereotype that I only associate with people that look like me, that sound like me or think like me. You want to have an, a good healthy diversity of friends, especially now. I mean, like, again, we've coming out of a season where divide is at the top of the list, you know, for a lot of things. You got to, you know, pick the, pick this position over here or you're in this position over here or you're in this party over here. Or you're with this person over here or whatever the case may be. And divide is a very big thing is running rampant it throughout our society, but you being a bearer of light, a bearer of hope, someone who is unlocked and is free, you get a chance to actually break that down by doing something simple as like, hey, you know, getting to know you, getting to know your story. Mm -hmm. And again, the best part about it is that it's not just about you, it's about the person on the other end. I like to call it a deposit mindset over a withdrawal mindset. I'm here to deposit the goodness of God in your life or just the goodness of what I've learned in my lifetime that has been good to me. And maybe some of you say, you know what, I don't, I don't have very much good. Okay, that's I understand that. But you have to have a starting point somewhere and you're going to have to step out and maybe take and it's going to feel a little it's going to feel a little different it's going to feel a little awkward but if you take that step of faith and 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 really step out and see that God has a plan not only a big plan for your life but he has the plan for the people around you and yeah yes. you can be a catalyst for yes. that man you can see so much transformation in a small amount of time like all the things that you've been carrying maybe it's guilt maybe it's shame maybe it's despair maybe it's ostracism maybe somebody's ostracized you all that can come crashing off of your life 
in an instant, just like that, because of your willingness to step out in faith. So I want to encourage you, if all you listeners who are watching or listening to this, is it's a small, simple step of faith to really just come into relationship with people. And it's even better when you do it with people who don't look like you and don't have your background, because then you start to strengthen your relationship equity bank, I so to speak, so to speak in your heart uh, to the masses. Yeah. And a lot of times God will use relationships for your connections and your platform. Mm -hmm. So very rarely have things just come through like a technical or a, a very like meaty way. Normally it's a friend says this, and then you like, Oh, I'll introduce you to this person. And these relational things are usually the way that God unlocks our destiny and our assignment. So what would you say is the next step in that journey? So we have baseline, we have dealing with our defense mechanisms and mm -hmm. uh, relationships. What would you say mm -hmm. is next? Then I would say after, after relationship is start taking an assessment, you know, take an assessment on where you've gone thus far. And then I always like to, you know, I'm a very huge advocate of identifying strengths mm -hmm. and callings on people around me, people that I may meet or interact with and just storing that in my heart or storing that in my mind yeah. um, and say, man, this person is so amazing at this and not be threatened that you are actually propelling someone ahead mm -hmm. of where you're at. Like, yes. don't feel like it's a threat. Like I'm not getting ahead, but I see this person over here getting ahead. So man, I'm gonna be upset. Actually, inherit a different inherit the opposite mindset so you know what man i have a cousin who's amazing at banking and she's super intelligent with finance but i also know this person who's looking for someone that has that gift you know what let me just make the connection yeah. let me just make introduce the two and then go from there that in itself is gold mm -hmm. not only for you because at that point you're saying not only to yourself you're saying to the people around you and you're saying before guys like god it's not about me That's it's right. not about me it's about helping people bringing strength to my community bringing strength to my family bringing strength to my relationships connecting the right pieces and i've always found if you're able to be completely emptied of yourself in that aspect that Man, it's it's supernatural, but it's true. Like, man, you just get God blesses you. He just yeah, it just yeah. does like it comes because at that point he can entrust to you something that is so overwhelmingly like, man, how'd you get there, man? There's no way that you got that promotion. There's no way you got that job. Like yeah. you don't yeah. even qualify. And you're probably saying to yourself, you're right. I don't qualify. But here I am. And it's yeah. really stemming from service unto other people. So I'll, I usually take an assessment of that. Am I? How much of that do I see that in my life? Am I intentional about doing that? Or am I, is it, because when you start to become intentional in the little, it becomes the overflow in the many. It starts overflowing out of your life naturally. Like it, you don't even have to try at that point because it's just who you are and, and, and who God designed you to be from the very beginning, which is to be generous. Not, and I'm not talking about just financially generous you know, being generous with your relationships, being generous with your influence, being generous with your smile, being yes. generous with your personality, mm -hmm. being generous with whatever, you know, you've been entrusted with in this lifetime. Um, I see that it is, that is like the key to being really, really unlocked and really being happy. So true. So good. Mm -hmm. And that's, mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest part of it is many people might be hearing this and saying, oh, that's nice, but that's not really my personality. But what you do a little bit in the hidden place, you're starting to create those neural pathways and then you get momentum, you get dopamine, and now you're developing habits. So most people wait until it feels like a good time to connect people or introduce themselves or go to a party or a mixer or a conference. But instead, if you can do the opposite, where you just start doing the behavior and then trust that the feelings will follow. So if this has not been your story and you're going, oh gosh, I'm not doing that at all. Or I feel a, a fear or inadequacy or shame, or you get shy, or you kind of do feel a little bit jealous, which would be totally normal and natural. But if you do the opposite and you do it any way and you're saying I'm going to be generous and if they develop a friendship outside of me that's okay because God will provide another friend um, mm -hmm. if this relationship doesn't end up working out and it was really me just being a conduit to help connect them over there then I can trust God will do that for me 
And mm-hmm. I've seen that over and over right now. I keep meeting cybersecurity people. So I'm mm-hmm. just like, Hey, everybody that I meet, I'm like, you're all going to be friends because I'm just little conduit over here. And so yeah. it's so fun to then see how that unlocks for people. And then I'll see in my own life in a totally unrelated way has nothing to do with those people or situations. God will unlock something in a different area. And I'm like, touche Lord. That's yeah, really cool. So absolutely. takeaway for that is make sure that you do the behavior before you feel like doing it. The more you do it, you'll develop the feelings and then it will be reinforcing. You have to plan yeah. your life ahead of time. Don't just do based on what you feel like doing, because then you'll feel like staying at the plateau you're already at keeping Mm -hmm. the glass ceiling. But if Mm -hmm. you start the habits now and you're intentional planning ahead, where do I want to be? And we're starting to implement Greg's wisdom, then I can now start strategically investing in certain areas, creating that assessment, getting that baseline, developing the relationships and kingdom mindset, getting it off of me and more into how can I use my current sphere of influence? And when I'm faithful with little, now I can be prepared and trusted with more. Absolutely. And and the cool part about that is that you grow in influence when you do that. And there's a difference between authority and influence. You know, authority, people follow you because of who you are on paper. Influence is people follow you because of who you carry you and, and who you're carrying, who you're emanating, which is obviously you were all made in the image of God. So we're emanating something that's way bigger than any of us yeah. on this planet. And, and the cool part about that is when you move in influence, these doors open, you just almost like a connector and you're, you're, you're propelling people into their destiny. And let me say, I, for some of you on here, probably like, oh, that's really cool. I don't really move at that level of influence. You could do it right in your work. Maybe there's someone in your job. Maybe maybe you're working at what you may feel like is a lowly space or a, a, a corporation where you don't feel like it has a whole lot of influence. You can be the influencer in that, though. Maybe there's a coworker that you see that just works hard, has an amazing attitude, and you would feel confident to vouch for them like, hey, you know what? This young lady over here or this young man over here. They need a raise. And you went to actually went to bat for them and asked for a raise, even though, you know, deep down, you personally need a raise. But you went on their behalf to your boss or to the corporation and asked for a raise or you vouch for them to get a job or whatever the case. Maybe you can put many different scenarios. But the point is the core value of exalting and helping people around you. You grow in influence. You grow in influence to impact your environment. Uh, to speak into different things because influence grows when you yield to yourself and it's about the environment or the people around you. And you're not threatened that people are going ahead of you or, 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 or because what happens, Hey, I'll give you a perfect example. I had a friend of mine who, who was uh, uh, growing and, and, and this person was actually, we were probably at the same level. And I just actually, I did exactly what I just told you guys to do. And I went to say, Hey, you know, this person right here, man, they got it. You know, we need to make room for them. We need to establish a pit. And this person actually um, got pulled up to another level of leadership. And I ended up serving this person for a very long time. Well, fast forward when my time came and He actually vouched for me and I got promoted to another position above him. And this person actually served, served me and and he he served me out of how I've served him for a season, how I promoted him for a season. Again, that's a that's a principle of the kingdom of God right there. That's a that's a reverse principle. It's not about me. It's about him. and It's about other people that and most people, if you can grasp that telling you. Hear me when I tell you this. If you can grasp that, you will see an acceleration of unlocking. You will see an acceleration of happiness and you will see an acceleration of purpose and peace for your life. If you go after that principle. That's so good. Mm-hmm. And have the longevity perspective, because at mm-hmm. first you're serving him. Or you may make a connection or a recommendation. You may advocate for somebody and they never turn around and thank you. 
Mm-hmm. But there's an economy in heaven that's keeping record of what you do. And mm-hmm. God is faithful to make sure mm-hmm. that you get reinforced. So many times people get disappointed because they're looking at right now and they're looking at these people in this circumstance to be my reinforcement versus mm-hmm. when you put seed deep in the ground, sometimes it takes a while for it to grow and mature slash you and I are growing and maturing. And so mm-hmm. in that time, now we're ready to come up and there's a blossoming and a health to that waiting season. So for some of you that maybe you're thinking, well, I've tried that, but it hasn't really worked. Maybe just give it more time Mm -hmm. and keep serving, keep doing the right thing anyway, and then wait to see what happens as doors unlock for you, opportunities, positions. Um, I've had people that have even recommended that I become a professor when I barely even knew the person, but I had been connecting people. And so they were like, man, that girl is just really thoughtful and incredible. And I know her character and who she is. And so they recommended that I get a position that wasn't even advertised. And there's things that it will just accelerate you so much further if you do it God's way and you do that economy of heaven versus striving and gutting it out and trying to posture yourself and be around the right people and keep it the Mm -hmm. eye show. Yeah. And people can smell phony a billion Mm -hmm. miles away, you know, and eventually phony will reveal itself. So you don't want to come with, you know, a phony mentality and you're trying to position yourself and maneuver around this person and be around this person, be authentic, be real. People can also identify when you are authentic and real and when you're genuine and when you're humble and when you're vulnerable, when you need to be vulnerable, all that stuff translates that I'm confident that I'm unlocked. I'm confident that I'm free. I'm confident that I don't need uh, uh, anybody to affirm who I am because I know God already said this about me. All that thing, all that spells is promotion for yourself, not only just here in this lifetime and promotion may not be a position promotion is peace. You want peace. You want peace in the middle of your storm. You want peace when things are chaotic around your house. You want peace when the money is dried up or when you're in this season of transition. You want peace. Peace is not the absence of something. It's the presence of someone. You want peace in your life every single day. And the best way for you to get that peace is to understand this is how I build it in the private place so I can see it manifested or most importantly reflected in the public space. That's so good. That's so Mm -hmm. good. Okay. So what's our next principle? So our next principle after that, I would say, okay, so, so let's, let's recap, let's recap. Okay. So, so you probably can recap better than me. I know you, I know you were (laughs) writing it down. Mm -hmm. Defense mechanisms, the yeah, buts, how we disqualify Mm -hmm. ourselves, relationships, Mm -hmm. not Mm -hmm. making it about me. Uh, Mm -hmm. connecting others and doing Mm -hmm. God's economy versus self. I think that's it. Yeah. And and, and then I would say maybe the last thing, um, again, I I think we talked about this a little bit earlier. This is a very, very um, important step. And I'll dig into it just a little bit deeper is assessment. Again, you needed to really, really assess where your heart is at, because here's a, here's the thing about it. You start doing these things, and your life is like, uh, you know, blessed on steroids. Like everything is just clicking. Things are going amazing. You know, you're seeing all this success. You're seeing all these relationships and it's becoming really, really full, really vibrant. And you're stepping into what God is calling you to do. But you constantly want to take an assessment of your heart, that your heart is right, that you're doing it for the right intentions, that Your identity is not in just doing that, but more importantly, who you're serving to do those things, because you can get lost in that becoming your identity. You being known as the person as the connector or you being known as the person who knows everybody and people would just call you or want to do that. And and listen, it it happens. Okay, it happens. It's happened to me. It's happened to people. I know that moving these types of things, it's happened. So if you can constantly get in a space and be intentional Be intentional of getting in a space and assessing your heart and saying, God, it's not me who has all these relationships. These are your relationships. It's not me who's making all these connections. You're making all the connections. It's not me who has went from being locked up and bound by fear, unforgiveness, shame, guilt, all these things for being to being free and being happy and being successful and being someone who is helping others. It's you who did all this. If you can constantly get in that space and consistently, 
get in that space mm -hmm. to posture your heart and make sure your heart is right. That's a good, healthy balance. And the other part I would say into that is learning when to take rest. Rest is important. Rest is important to God. Rest is important. It should be important to you. Mm -hmm. It's good to go, 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 but it's important that you take rest. I mean, God took rest. He, he, he rested one day out of the entire week. He, he, he took rest. So if it's important to him, it should be important to you. So take an assessment, but in your rest, and, 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 as you take an assessment and you're doing it, maybe when you're resting and you're just spending time, no one's bothering you. You're not thinking about the next connection. You're not thinking about helping the next person. You're just standing before God and it's like, hey, God, thank you. And thank you that you would entrust little old me to, to do such a spectacular thing. What are you saying in my heart? Or show me if there's anything in my heart that is not that you what you have for me in this next season or what you have for me in my leadership or what you have for me. Because when you constantly stay consistently in that position, you start to see that there's a healthy balance to what you're called to do. Yeah. And most importantly, you step into what real happiness is um, in your life. And I think to your point, rest means that it's not my identity. Mm -hmm. If I can pull away, if I can unplug and step away from that and still be okay, just being me without the spotlights or the connections or the people or the fame or whatever you've been chasing. If you know that you are still hundred percent content and satisfied to just chill with a cup of coffee and a journal or a walk or just be, or be with your family instead of always chasing the next thing, then you know that you're operating out of a healthier sense of identity versus your identity now getting wrapped up to, into something that could later crash and devastate mm -hmm. you. You know, there's lots of times that people's jobs and positions and they pivot and life can happen. And so we don't want to let our identity be in that position or that platform, because then we're just constantly in this, like striving to keep it and maintain it. And then we're not able to actually rest. I have a lot of clients that are um, entrepreneurs and business owners or executives. And so when I talk about rest, they're like, oh yeah, I'm not like doing anything, but their brain is still working. And so if you're still ruminating, thinking through how you're going to do this, that's not rest. True rest is mentally stepping back, taking yourself off the idol of your own life and just being in a moment and just enjoying the simple and the delight of being present by yourself or with loved ones, uh, getting some exercise, getting some sleep, doing something that brings like healthy pleasure to your life rather than you're still kind of thinking through and maneuvering and posturing everything in your mind, like a strategy. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that you have to be intentional in that because our society is geared to get ahead, get ahead, yeah. keep going, keep going, keep providing. And you can go, 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 go. And next thing you know, you look up. Oftentimes the people that I've ever, I've worked with personally or have spoken into their lives, they don't know how to rest. They don't know what rest even looks like. That it's, it's actually foreign to them because they work so hard and there's nothing wrong with working hard, but rest is a part of your growth as a human being. You need to rest. It's, it's, it's in your DNA. Um, it's to your benefit, but probably more importantly, it's to the benefit of the people around you. Let's say you're a CEO of a, of a fortune uh, 500 company, but you don't know how to rest. All you know is how to get that company going, uh, make resource and push, push, push and push your employees. But if you don't know how to rest, then you can't really hear what's best for the company moving forward. Or let's say you're a stay at home mom or stay at home dad, and you're just soccer dad and you don't learn how to rest and your whole world is revolved around providing for your family or providing for your kids. Well, you can get a little edgy. You can get a little short wind. You can get a little snappy with your children and that they're trying to share their heart. And, and, and meanwhile, you don't even know it, but you're tired yeah. deep down, even though your greatest desire is to provide for your family. Rest is important because it gives you perspective. That's the best part about it. It gives you perspective yes. okay. on where you're at in your life. And that's what you want. You want healthy balance of, of working hard, blessing other people, but you also want perspective of, is this becoming an, an idol in my life? Is this bigger than just, is it, it am I, is my whole identity wrapped in this? Is this become bigger than myself? You know, like you, you, but you, it gives you perspective to step back, um, look at it, assess it, assess your heart, assess your motives, 
assess why you are en engaged, and then jump back in and do it with health, do it with balance. Because again, at the end of the day, you're going to grow in so much wisdom yeah. as a man, as a woman, you're going to grow in so much wisdom as a friend, you're going to grow in so much influence as a human being, and as a connector and all that God's going to entrust you. But if you don't have perspective on how to balance that, that blessing will crush you more than it will accelerate you. And so I would say the last thing, again, that is most importantly is assessment and rest. Those two things for you to come into an unlocked life and a peace and a place of peace um, as a human being in this lifetime. Yes. So good. So would you just pray over our audience that they have that permission to dream dreams are unlocked and any blocks and resistance, any defense mechanisms or anything else that's been holding back the ability to dream, uh, that that would just be cleared out. So our audience can start to awaken to some of that development that um, is wanting to come to the surface. Yeah, absolutely. God, thank you for every single listener, every single person under the sound of my voice that is listening to our conversation, Lord, you are in the middle of the conversation. And God, we thank you for all the wisdom that you've entrusted to us, for all the listeners to uh, inherit and implement in their daily lives. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, just an unlocking of peace over their life, God, that they would know that you have a, a tremendous and bountiful destiny for them to step into, God. But before they step in, God, they need good core values, good structures, good principles, for them to inherit that blessing. I pray, God, for them to have permission again to dream again, God. If their dream has been extinguished, if their dream has faded away, God, whether they're stay-at-home mom, whether they're a single mom, whether they're a single dad, whether they're a single parent, wherever they are in their life, to the Fortune 500 influencer, CEO, um, athlete, um, actress, actor, God, person of influence, I pray in the name of Jesus that they would dream again, God, that Lord, they would know how to do that, that would have healthy balance, that they would be consistent in their pursuit um, to step out and step into the fullness that you have for their lives, Lord. I come against anything that has extinguished their right to dream, God, and I pray right now in the name of Jesus that it would be an acceleration, God, that rivers of living water would flow into their dreams and it would refresh them, it would revive them, it would strengthen them, God, and that you will receive all the glory, God. You will receive all the glory in their dreaming, in their establishing, in their building. So, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. We give you glory and praise. Thank you for such an amazing conversation. We pray that it bless the listener and the viewer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate it. And this is just the beginning of so much more. I know people need to get developed on so many levels. So thank you for your wisdom. And we are cheering you on, everybody. Thank you for watching this episode and we will see you for the next one. Love you guys. Hey, thanks so much for watching this episode of Unlock You. It is our dream to invest in you. And one of the ways you can do that is by getting more of the bonus material, the content, and to know about future events. Head to the website, drshannoncrawford.com, subscribe to the newsletter, and you'll be the first to know what we're rolling out. And we want you to truly get unlocked so that you can thrive, not only for yourself, but also for the greater calling on your life. Let's link arms and do it together. See you in the next episode.